Thank you very much. So, good morning, everyone. I am glad to be here today to present to you the Zoo project and to give you information about what is happening in the project right now and what will be, we will work on during the next month. So, the Zoo project uh, is an implementation in C and C++ of the WPS uh, standard. Actually, we envision the Zoo project initially as a standard protocol to be able to communicate with all the OSGEO library or all the complex algorithms that are available uh, in our current uh, open source land world. So we were willing to have a generic way to interact with all the li these libraries. So here is an overview of the Zoo project history, which started in 2008 during the first 4G in Cape Town, where the ID came, born. And then you have all the releases that uh, lead us to 2022 and the 1.9.0 version, which is a revolutionary one. So here are the people which are leading the, the project. So you have also below a picture of uh, the PSC meeting in uh, uh, Phosphor G Europe. Here are some of the committers because uh, nowadays we have moved to GitHub, so we have much more contributors than only the initial one. Here are our uh, knowledge partners, which are university, which help us uh, spread the word to the student and uh, create uh, dedicated courses based on our Zoo project. And the, the last to come was the Nareswan University, which is from Thailand. So obviously we are open, we are really, really open, so we are expecting contribution from the community. So you can join our mailing list, you can join us on IRC, you can use GitHub or any Transifex, or, and you can deploy, you can develop your own services or implement a new capability inside the Zoo kernel. So let's go in deep details about the component of this WPS platform. So we have the Zoo kernel, which is a generic uh, processing engine, which has uh, not much to do with WPS. It's only a language to communicate with the server. Then we have the WPS service suite, which is a service implemented by us or you're reusing the available technologies. Then we have this WPS API, the Zoo API, which is a JavaScript API for creating and chaining your services on the server side, meaning reusing the existing services and create a more complex one. Then you have this uh, Zoo client, which is a JavaScript library that will be used this time on the client side to communicate with the server and interact easily with the WPS implementation. So we start with uh, Zoo kernel, which uh, does support WPS1 and WPS2. Specification made available, obviously, by the Open uh, Geospatial Consortium. It runs on uh, every platform. Uh, Zoo kernel, the latest Zoo kernel version 1.9.0 is currently supporting the OGC API processes part one core. Actually, the Zoo project was involved in testbed 16 for, the, for working on the test suite. Zoo kernel is also able to support a, any programming languages. So we, have currently, we are currently supporting C, C++, Fortran, Java, PHP, Perl, Ruby, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, and R. Which means that you, if you know to program only in one of these programming languages, then you, will, you can implement your full service only using this specific language. Also, this was a nice step to support all these programming languages. Unfortunately, it will still require some work from our side to implement the services. This is why we then decided to integrate the GIS processing engine, which are already available around, like Orfeo Toolbox and Saga GIS. So it means that you don't have any line of code to write anymore. You can reuse all the OTB application and all the Saga GIS application out of the box. So since the beginning, we are supporting map server internally, meaning that for every single process which will output GIS data, you, it will be, you can ask the Zoo kernel to automatically publish for you WMS, WFS, or WMS, WCS, and here is an example where you have the WMS to show the, show the safest path, the WFS request corresponding to the same service 
on the right hand side to show the details of every steps and down below the profile which reuse this same uh, WFS uh, request. I wonder how can I go down actually? Okay, it, it, it goes down on its own. Since uh, WPS1, we are also supporting asynchronous requests. Even if it, there were no get, res, uh, get status request at that time, we simply implemented a WPS service that was named get status. No, in WPS2, you don't have this issue anymore. So we were involved in uh, GeoSud and then Fidias HPC, where the Zoo kernel was used to uh, execute remote processing working on a HPC server, one of the 10 most powerful uh, servers in the whole world. Then uh, here you can see the history and the user interface of this GeoSud uh, project, where actually the automatic publication of uh, web, OGC web services like WMS and WCS were used not only for the output but also for the input. So nowadays uh, OGC for a few years is working on moving to Open API. So they renamed uh, all the uh, traditional standard and now WPS became OGC API processes, meaning that you can interact with it using JSON request. So you can see, even if it's really small, on the left hand side, the Swagger UI, uh, which is uh, connected to our uh, uh, OGC API processes, Open API, which is published out of your service. What is interesting from my point of view is that you don't have to modify one line of code of your services to get it available as a WPS or as OGC API processes. And you have the simple HTML user interface which help you to write down the execute request. Also, during the OSGO, OGC OSGO Apache Software Foundation Code Sprint in 2022, we have implemented the support for automatic publication of OGC API features because Map Server uh, 8 version, which, will, which should come out in the upcoming week, uh, provides this OGC API features uh, support. So on the left hand side, you can see the uh, JSON request that has been sent. It, i it is running asynchronously and then you have the OGC API feature collection URL, URL, path, the, uh, URL that you can uh, browse and uh, check see the feature. Here are the last test developments that has been integrated within the current Zoo kernel. So you can now have a Zoo frontal Zoo kernel and then a Zoo, what we call the Zoo Fast Process Manager, where you can then, rather than executing everything on the same server, you can uh, extract, uh, send a message on RabbitMQ message queue and then have the execution running uh, in somewhere else or in other pod or a dedicated pod. It depends on your willing. Also, this year we get the luck to get uh, three more Google Summer of Code. One Google Summer of Code is uh, done by Sandy Pan, which is the goal is to have the QGIS-based QGIS processing available as a first citizen uh, process service in the Zoo Project world. Also, I would like uh, to specifically thank uh, Momchil Mopchev, which has uh, implemented the support for Node.js within the Zoo kernel, meaning that you can implement your uh, services in CGS or ES6, and uh, you can work, you can run them as a traditional WPS or OGC API processes. Also, uh, this year we got uh, some grant from Microsoft because Microsoft has a program which is named Microsoft Azure for open source software. And thanks to the, their offer, their grant, we were able to make the Zoo project running on Kubernetes so smoothly. Our future development is uh, to integrate the Map Server 8 modification I was presenting to you earlier. Investigate the two extensions of OGC API processes, meaning the deploy, replace, and undeploy, which is in progress right now. We have already some uh, content and some source code available made by uh, Blasco Brosier. Then we have this part three, which is workflow. So I, I have a meeting actually this afternoon to discuss specifically about this because uh, we have few, few issues to implement it or understand how it should work. 
and then we are also willing to support uh, the efficient data access for specific formats such as COG and OGC API features and also as it is defined in the part three maybe uh, integrate the specific uh, type which is OGC API features rather than input. So then we have the Zoo services. So Zoo services is a couple made of uh, Zoo configuration file, which can be in different format, with our own format, Zoo configuration file, or it can be YML. And since uh, 1.7 version, you can also store all the metadata directly in a PostgreSQL database or generate the SQL code from your existing ZCFG. So here is a very simple uh, Hello World code. Here you can see what uh, software are currently integrated within the uh, Zoo services. So Gidal, Sigal, Orpheo Toolbox, and Sagat GIS. Also GeoTool has been uh, done during the GSOC in 2016. Then we have this Zoo API, but I won't go in deep details because it's, uh, 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 it will become uh, soon obsolete because we will uh, move almost everything to OGC API processes, so there is no need anymore for XML parsing and so on. So it will make our work even easier. So here you have an overview of uh, what you can do uh, by using the Zoo API. Here it's a uh, demonstration of MapMint 1 tiling system. Here is another one which is a georeferencer which has been made in 2011. Then we have the Zoo client, so the JavaScript library to ease interaction between the client and the server. Here are the examples. Uh, what I like in this demonstration is that the forms, uh, HTML forms for every single services are based on a template. So it means that if you are implementing a new service and you want a quick demo or uh, testing it uh, quickly, you can simply reuse this add your uh, service name in the select list and you will get the HTML form on the left hand side automatically generated for you. This is the uh, exact same example but with Orfeo Toolbox this time. Here is another example of the MapMin2 version which is taking advantage of the Zoo client and uh, the last test version of the Zoo kernel. Uh, here is another example uh, of the Zoo client integration also in MapMint with a new georeferencer, look and feel. And here is yet another uh, cl uh, classifier. When you are running a classification on the MapMint user interface, it will look like this. So for a few, for a year, I think, Zoo project is now running on Docker, meaning that you can deploy it uh, on every computer uh, quite easily and fastly. Uh, you can also run it, you can also reuse the container and a binary Docker image to run it on a Kubernetes cluster. We have moved uh, uh, two years ago on uh, GitHub and so we are now also having some testing, not uh, as much as map server has, but uh, at least we have something. Here is a MS4W package, so I would like to thank uh, Jeff Makina for the work in integrating the Zoo project to make it running on Windows. And uh, then you will have uh, the luck or the privilege to assist to uh, mapping the talk right after this one. And this is it. Grazie mille. Thanks for your time. And I think I'm uh, just uh, more than on time. Yeah. Very good. <laughs>